Hey, hey, Blue Table fans! Hey! That was hey! Funny. It's... Hey! <laughs> oh, I'm on the wall. I'm going to chair. I'm going to change it. Okay. So first off, check out Shannon's hat. Isn't that so cute? Thanks. That's awesome. You're a hairstylist. It was a bad you know hair day, so I had to cover it up. Yeah. Tammy's got a bunch of hats like that. You know, hats are the only way to go. If you're Girl's a girl. best friend. Oh, seriously. <laughs> I mean, you have those days where it's like nothing is working out, so you just oh, yeah. throw on a hat. And it looks great. You know, it looks like I actually tried to do something, but really I did nothing. So. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That looks adorable. Yeah, thanks. It's adorable. So here we are with you. And welcome to the show where we talk about <laughs> where whatever. we get really awkward. And, and, yeah, it, yeah, it's bound to happen. It seems like it gets worse and worse between us, like the awkwardness. Like all our videos, like not between us, but like our videos, like slowly get weirder and weirder. Do you think? No. Um. No. No. Okay. no. If you go back and look at the old Badger Hole ones with me and Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. It weird. was. Yeah. We talked about right. personal stuff. Yeah, I went, I had a, uh, a guy come out, and he did, went through my business mentoring program, and by the way, I'm completely confident that it is well worth it. It's the right thing. It's awesome. I could talk uh, easily and at length and intelligently about almost any topic. Really? In fact, any topic. Yep, absolutely. Could you really hold a conversation about roller derby? Oh, no, no, no. About related to the miniatures of singing and painting. Really? You said yeah, any straight. topic, not related right. to Right, any related topic. Okay. Anyway. That got me so, so anyway, excited. I was like, yeah, so I took, I took him out on a tour to say, you know, if you start a business, this may be some of the places you'll look at. We've measured square footage. Did you go to like your own places and stuff? That's right. We went to every single last studio. And right. as I was leaving the badger hole, did you cry? I did. I did. Yeah. With nostalgia and happiness and a little bit of regret. Well, we had a point of regret. Why? Oh, wow. Um, you're going to make me talk about this on I mean, camera? I guess not. Yeah. Well, it's funny because we had this lady that used to work for you many, many years ago. That's right. She, we, she was 19 in 2005. We interviewed her a while ago. I, it was her mom that I talked about. Oh, that's right. And uh, So it was Tanya. Yeah, so it was Tanya, and she was like, oh, this is so crazy to be here because when I used to work with Sean, like, he talked about a place like this, and now he has it. She's like, it's so crazy to be here, you know, so. That's right. We were in yeah. this tiny little office, and I was like, one day, although you may not believe it, we'll have a great hall where there will be tables, ton like six tables permanently on display. It'll be awesome. It's going to be so, I'm going to call it my world room. And now that we have it, it's like, you just walk through. <laughs> ah, whatever. So I would, I would dare to say the stuff I'm talking about now, you will be living that. Valhalla. Valhalla is happening. The Great Hall. So the, yeah. Yay. I felt so vindicated when she told me that. I was like, yep, sure enough. If you just stick with it and dig your heels in on your dreams, they will How happen. long have you been going at it now? Like 10 years? Yeah, uh, nine and a half years. So ten this years month. is coming out, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, right. that's a big one. Dig. And it's getting, it's, it's accelerating. Yeah. Yep. Really fast, actually. It seems like now. It's crazy. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Yeah. Well, I think ten years of growth, whatever happened in the first ten years, will start to happen in probably two or three years. Right. It'll accelerate like that. Yeah. So that's that's how it always is. Cool. So hey, let's talk about summer. Oh, I'm so excited for summer. <laughs> so uh, it's June right now. My son's birthday is in two days. It's gonna be 12. <laughs> I know it's getting so big. Uh, so that's exciting. But uh, so, what do you guys do for the Fourth of July? Um, we just uh, um, have a barbecue. It's family. Right. We have a barbecue. Right. We light off fireworks. <laughs> Well, the thing in past years we've gone to the city fireworks, right. and it's it's like crowded, right. and you've got to bring all your equipment, and right. then the kids are running around, so you got to keep track of them. Right. And I'm like, hey, instead of doing this, why don't we just go get an awesome fireworks? Well, setup? and now the good you ones are something? legal here. Like you can shoot. Really? Up. <laughs> you didn't know all this. I didn't know this. Yeah, you okay, can how shoot up the like the ones that go up really high. Roman candles. And right, like those are legal here now. But last year they weren't because we had like forest fires everywhere. Right. We had fires everywhere, so they were bad last year. But 
In yeah. Oregon, we mm -hmm. used to love, when I was kids, we used to buy a bunch of Roman candles right. and have Roman candle fights out in the forest. That's so crazy. And just crazy. point them at each other. Like, now if your kids I'm that, joking. Oh, we I never like, did that. Come on. That's insane. <laughs> you guys are so Don't redneck. Don't <laughs> <from> Oregon. <laughs> I grew up. Right. I say hillbilly. Well, that's why. Yeah. That's why I wasn't really surprised. It was broken it down old like, cars, making yeah. things out of scrap metal. Did you guys play in my old cars <laughs> that were broken down, like just in the middle of the field? Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 We were out there. Okay. So. So talk about summer. Well, you love summer. I love summer. I'm so happy right now because it's summer. So the Fourth of July, we go to um, Montana because I have family out there oh, okay. and stuff. And so last year we weren't able to go it's because. Beautiful. They had fires from here to Montana, like mm. through Idaho, yeah. everywhere. So we weren't able to go last year. So I'm really excited to go this year. And then uh, here we have July 24th. It's like, is that Utah's like Independence Day? Pioneer what are, Day. What is that, by the way? I don't even know. It's, uh, well, the pioneers arrived. Is that? They so that's did, like our They day. celebrated July 4th, Independence <laughs> Day. Right. And so they had parades where, you know, the young women would go down the street and then the young men and then the elders, right. and then they had like the Constitution frame, and they would parade the Constitution down the, the street, and then they did their own celebration okay. on July 24th, Pioneer Day. So it's not like Utah's like, when it was like established or anything, like? Uh, n I don't think so. You don't think Th so? That's about all I know about it. Like July 24th. But anyways, that's when we have our fiesta days here, mm -hmm. and so Spanish Park like gets crazy, and I live right downtown. And so it's super fun because, like, a block away from me is where, like, we have carnivals, like, car shows, dances. I mean, we have everything. It's super fun. And then we go to the rodeo every year. I take my kids to the rodeo, and we love it. It is, like, our favorite thing ever. But we have, yeah, Spanish Park is, like, really known for that. There's tons of cowboys and, like, rodeo people. I don't know when they are. But uh, we have, like, the big fairgrounds, and they just redid it last year. Have you been there? No. Did it. Uh, maybe we went to a flag you burning flag ceremony. Or for your son. Oh, by the way, I just said flag burning. <laughs> it's actually it's actually a flag retirement ceremony. Why would you? And they do they do like a procession. It's a right. whole thing, and they and that's how they dispose of the flags honorably. Right. It wasn't like ah oh, down at the USA. It was a flag retirement ceremony. That's good. That Not a flag good. burning event. <laughs> Okay, so go ahead. Well, the stadium's so, awesome. So. I've been there in like the last, that was like last, It was like, like two when years it was, ago? No, it how was soon they, the, how just recently? last year, but they opened it up. Well, maybe like, I haven't seen it there. Right before the, the rodeo, so I think okay. it was like, probably this time last year was when it like Okay, then I probably up. haven't seen it. No, I think you guys did go, right? When okay. it opened up, that's where you guys did okay. everything at. I want to say. Right. I just, I can't remember. Right. It's all blurring into yeah. one now. So, and then, so we have that going on, and I got a ticket for Slash. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm so excited to go see Slash of Guns N' Roses. Come on, you guys all know this. Right. And he tours by himself. Uh, and you think, too, like, how good would a concert be with just, like, a guitar player? It's amazing. It was the best show I've ever seen. So I'm going to go back again and see him. And then, wait, one more thing in July. July is so busy for me. Uh, RollerCon in Vegas. So it's, like, the convention for roller derby is the very end of July. How exciting is that? I'm going to probably die, but <laughs> it's pretty awesome. They do, like, classes and stuff like that for roller derby, and then they have tons of, uh, like, challenge games and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm signed up for one challenge game. We'll see how good it goes. Because, <laughs> like, the best players... But is it your team? No, it's, or like, the you best just players... just show up and they... No, it's, like, our, I mean, anybody can go who plays roller derby. Yeah. So you just have to buy a ticket, you know, to go. And um, there's, like, different tickets that you can buy. So, like, there's an MVP where you can do everything. Um, there's like a skater pass, which is what I got, and so you can do like some of the training classes, and then you can play in this, some of the games and stuff like that. So, but it's like the best players from all over the world come for this and stuff. So it's pretty exciting. I'm excited to go. <laughs> yeah. So July is super busy, and then August is gonna be awesome too. We may or may not be going to Gen Con. Haven't decided quite yet. Um, and then we have the August ball club. So how excited are you for that? I'm very excited. I'm having dreams about how awesome it's going to be. I, well, it's summer here.
too. And I think I think by then, like, it'll kind of start cooling off a little bit. It's going to be 78 degrees up in I, That's what I kind of think. Lodge. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. And then... Yeah. The lakes. Oh, so green. The trees will be all oh, green. the up. smell. It's going to smell yes. so good. Up and there in right October... Now. October's going to be through the roof. Well, October because it's awesome. like fall, it's awesome. and then it's going to be, I mean, just colors. It's so gorgeous. And oranges and yellows Here's and greens. Here's what's going to happen. So. Someone who, and you know what? People are watching who are like, I would love to go, but I can't go. Quit bugging me about it. Oh, and I appreciate we're, we're not that. even bugging you. We're just telling right. you how awesome it is. Jeez. Seriously. So, anyway, <laughs> but I, I understand that. Uh, make make go out of your way to come out because after we put up the videos of it it will be I don't even think that's a good statement amazing. if you is it not a good statement no, if you want to come out we will make sure that we make it happen for you so let's say you want to make yes it, you cannot come up with all of it at once which who can right now not a lot of people can it's a lot of money so <clears throat> well we have like 10 weeks until August uh -huh. if you want to start making payments to towards the ticket for August, we can set you up for that. You can pay two hundred dollars a week, whatever works for you, and then we can even a hundred dollars a week. Right? Yeah. Ninety a week. Right. Could get you a drop pod. Right. Yeah. Right. It actually would. Yeah. Yeah. So we can definitely make sure you can come out. I mean, we can set up payment plans. We do have some tickets available for October as well, still. So I think yeah. we have like a drop pod and then some event. Passes. Oh, get that drop pod. I think there's only the one there. left, so one, one drop. And that's only August. because somebody had canceled, and so that's in October. So if you want that, you can stay on on site with us and with everybody. That is so exciting! It's like all of our friends. We're so excited to have everybody out here. Okay, let's try to name them all. We okay. can do this. Okay? So hold on. Wait. There's August and yeah. then there's October. Right. We're talking about October. We're talking right about October right now. Okay. So mini war gaming. Mini war gaming. Um, Les and Chung from right. War Gamers Consortium. Right. Uh, Joey Berry, War Gamer, Gamer Girl. Girl. Um, Nick, Nick and Dan. Right. And. Is that it? I think that's the guest roster. I think that's and it. That's an impressive guest roster. Yeah, I think that's it, right? Yes, it will not be boring. Oh out my there. gosh, not at all. <laughs> all of these personalities, these seven personalities, are. Yeah, it's through the roof. Yeah, well, they're all internet personalities now that I just realized yeah. this. And so, it's going to be awesome. And then, let's talk about August. He's coming out for August. So, in August... Oh, Brush for Hire. Yes, Brush for Hire. Yeah, we didn't say Brush, Brush for Hire. That's right. Uh, what is his name? Austin. Austin. I was yeah. going to say Nate for some reason. Yeah. Does he have a Nate and that works for him? I don't know. Uh, oh, Nate is coming out in August. So, let's talk about August. Okay. Uh, we have someone from Bethesda coming. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, we have Cool Mini um, is sending them. a ton of swag. Their games. And there's is so much what's swag. happening there. So, well, we'll have swag from Cool right. Mini. Very cool. Then we've got Infinity, um, Infinity Battle Phone, and um, oh man, am I missing somebody? And uh, possibly Nick as well. He's right. coming out to do stuff with us. Possibly. Yeah, we haven't really confirmed right. that. Some yet, of this so. is still firming up. Yeah. Oh, and of course, we have our own staff here, right. and a lot of people, they come up, and BTP is big on their list of people they want to be with. Yeah. So we have Karen and Ben doing a... So we're going to have our painters doing, um, like, classes, I guess. I mean, you don't have to pay for it. It's included in your ticket, but you come up, and we're going to have a sign-up thing, so if you want to sign up and kind of get some painting tutorials from our painters, then we're going to do that, and we're actually going to... Um, so either Nick and Dan are going to come out, or we're going to get a Golden Demon winner out there, too, as well, is what we're going to try to do, so that they can do some tutorials as well and kind of show their style of painting, because who doesn't want to learn from a Golden Demon winner, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to try to do that as well, um, and then we're just going to have gaming, I mean, kind of Food, gaming at your games, leisure. the pool. Um, oh my gosh, the pool, that's my favorite part. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And the hot tub, you might be like, oh, hot tub. I've been in a hot tub before. No, you haven't been in a hot tub that's up in the mountains with on top dudes. of this giant hill <laughs> with 10 dudes. All right. So, yeah, no. Um, yeah, okay, well, it's, 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 rarely, it's, rarely, it's rarely 10 people in the hot tub. No, it's more like there, three to six. There has been, though. There was has that. there been? Well, yeah, there... The I guess end I missed of, out on that. Yeah, the end of last time, Saturday night, there was, the, they were in the hot tub for like hours. I yeah. mean, I was going to say like three be. or four hours. 
and there's a tower that overlooks right. 360. So it's at the right. top. So you see like this valley. It's like a scene from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, kind right. of actually. Yeah, a hot tub floating yeah. above the scenery from Lord of the Rings. Right. There you go. That's what it looks like. Yeah, I think it's New Zealand's a little mountains. greener than the mountains are but here. But it won't though. be greener than in summer. Right. But in yeah, summertime. Yeah. Damn yeah. Lord of the Rings. It always goes back to that, huh? Yep. Da -na 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 -na. <laughs> I always make Lord of the Rings references with Shannon. Uh, it's long. Okay, so one of the rooms out there is... Um, how are you going to describe it? it? Well, do you want to take a crack? No, I want to see how you're going to Okay, it. great. Here it is. It's a suite, so it has a main room, which is like a little apartment, and it okay. overlooks one of the two lakes. It's called the Lakeview Room. Right. So it has these huge <laughs> windows. Like, that's all the wall is. It's yes. just windows. It's, it's gorgeous. gorgeous. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Like, you will get a feeling going into this room that is overwhelmingly positive. <laughs> what yeah. kind of feeling? <laughs> <laughs> well, and then it has, like, this so. little private kitchen. Like, it's a small one, but they have, like, a kitchen yeah. inside of it and a side. And then... A living room with leather chairs and a fireplace. No, Big that's... screen TV. Uh, no, it is. Do they have that? Yes. Do they have a couch in there? No, I, I said chairs. Oh, chairs. The big old chairs. recliner type like, chairs. I was like, how did I miss it? It's oh, awesome. Sure. And then it has a side room that right. has four bunks in it. Right. And it has its own private bath. Yeah. So it's like a little miniature house. It is. So in the main area, we're going to put two bunks, or a bunk with two things. Right. And there's the four. So six people. So for a gaming group of six people, you get about a third off the cost of six drop pods. Right. So it's, so it's, it's 3600 It's called our six for six room. Yeah. And so six if you get six people each. to come out, then it's 600 each. And you guys will all just share, I mean, these, it's basically like a suite. It's three, yeah. it's kind of like a three room kind of thing. Well, you got to understand, the rest of the house is 26,000 square feet. So you're not, it doesn't. It's crazy. It, yeah, you just need a place to sleep. And then you use the rest of the house the other 18 hours a day. Right. It's incredible. But okay. it's actually cheaper to do that than to buy a drop pod. So if you get a group of six people, then you have this room. Um, you don't even have to have six people. Just if you have five, you can split it however you want to split it. But it's a lot cheaper if you get six of your buddies to come out. So I think that is by far the way to go if you guys come out. So get a group of your friends. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm so excited to be back up there, though. And Andrea's yeah. gonna cook us food, and yeah. she's learning how to, how to cook a pig, yeah. like a full pig. Our yeah. chef is amazing, hands down, coolest person in the world. Uh, Sean asked her, she, he's like, you know, you do everything just so perfect, but you don't know how to roast a pig. And she's like, I'm gonna learn. Whoa. Yeah. I didn't phrase it that way. Kind of, pretty much. I didn't. That's how I took it. How did well, you say it? I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure it's like, it <laughs> wasn't, you you're great, but you don't know how to roast a pig. But maybe you should learn how to I roast a pig. I probably said, I probably said, wouldn't it be great if we had a, or I want a pig. That sounds like me. Okay. Either way, it still came across that way. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Okay, boys. Um, you're in luck because I happen to know all about women. And in fact, that's part of my, okay, no, don't. excuse me, no. there, okay, see, okay. she denies it now, but when you have confirmed it? it. Yeah, there was a day when I came in, and you and Sarah were in here, and I said, I have women figured out, and then I said what the deal was, and both of you said, that sounds about okay, right. Okay, what, what did you say? Yeah, well, but I want to talk about the thing I'm going to talk about. Okay. Which is, <laughs> maybe humans, let's go with humans, humans have this. Okay. Um, so, first off, if I knew a damn thing about women, I would stop now. <laughs> so, anyway, it's, there's a field, and things go through that field, and they get transformed into something negative. Yep. That you hear something negative. All women That's think how something I heard it. negative? Like, oh, jeez. All right. Like, you know, everything change, I hear is negative. <laughs> ding, change of topic. Change you of topic. You know how funny that is, though? Because, like, sometimes people will be like, like, you guys will give, like, girls comments or something, yeah. you know? Like, oh, your hair looks great. What's wrong with my hair? You know what I mean? They yes, the negativity field. <laughs> okay, so right. I'm going to put that in my belt okay. as, yes, I have. I don't I think that's it always right. the case, though. No, not of, of course yeah. not always. Yeah. You can't make such generalizations. No. But at some point, at some point, well, and it's just, okay, I've been married 19 years. Right. So I've had 19 years of observations right. to figure things out. Right. So, like, for example, my wife... As she's going throughout the day, her mother appears in a little cloud bubble above her. Right. And 
and says things to her that she like that have that are echoing across time. They're echoing across thirty years from when she was a little girl. Right. And uh, and that's tough. I'm sympathetic. I'm not making fun of it. I'm not making light of it. Right. I'm completely sympathetic. You know and maybe that's true of all humans. It's when you sound like your mom. I say yeah. things sometimes and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm my mother. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like horrifying. Like I have that's to awesome. stop and I'm like, that would, that's what my mom would say. I don't I love my mother, but it's not somebody you strive to be like. I don't know. I mean, maybe some of you do. I don't know, but yeah. Well, I talk. I talk. I talk to my kids and say, uh, you know, you, you get to observe me as your father, right? And you get to choose now the good things you want to keep and the bad things right. that you want to do better with. Right. And and I ask them, okay, how are you going to do things better than me? Right. And if they do, I'll be more than thrilled. Right. That'll be yeah. fantastic. And they're like, a okay, guy. What did Jonah say? I can't remember. Ah, he had something to say where it was like, it wasn't bad, but I was just like, oh, I wouldn't have thought of that. Right. You know, that he's already kind of identified something. Right. So, yeah, I, I want my kids to make their own decisions and be free and feel right. supported and to, to shape their reality however they want it. So. And, and not like my reality. Right. It's not going to be like my reality. It's going to be their own wonderful thing that they make. I love that. Oh, to get uh, back, I would be like my mom. She's a hard well, worker. There you go. Yeah. But that's that's one element right. that you would. Yeah. yeah. And you are a hard worker. Yeah. So was my mom. She yeah. she really she was a single mom too, and so she really she worked her butt off. She worked two jobs to take yeah. care of us and stuff, you know. So yeah. I am. I am. I went through what your son is going through. <laughs> right. That I I see well, it. That I, I went through it. too. Yeah. So it's kind of sad, you know. Right. It's just a cycle that doesn't ever end. I yeah. didn't get married. At age 13, <laughs> it's like, well, you're the man of the house now. Right. Start worrying. Oh, like 11. And you automatically yeah. start kind of worrying about things, right. even if you're not asked to do it. He does, yeah. too. My mom yeah. worked double shifts at the mill. Yeah. That's eight hours, then, uh, then a half an hour break, right. and then another eight hours of mill work. What do they do at the mill? Like, you had better, oh, okay, great, we'll talk about that. Um, like, you had better be eating enough calories to stay alive for all that exertion. Well, what do they do? Do they like, I mean, haul stuff? Oh, yeah. Like... Yeah. Uh, okay. So one summer, it's I'm like, yeah, it's summer break. My mom's like, by the way, you have a job out at the mill. It's full time. You'll be starting to work at the mill oh, this summer. I was 17. Oh, okay. At the time, a little farther along. Yeah. Um, you should have a job by then. Yeah. It was. Um, <laughs> yeah. It was the summer of my junior year. Right. And uh, yeah. So, but boy, uh, so I started on the sorting line. So all the odds and ends from the two by fours would come down, mm -hmm. and you'd have to measure them. So I got really good at just knowing that it was however long it was, and you'd sort them, right. and then you had to go puzzle them onto pallets, and then you'd wrap the pallet full of these oddball two by four pieces, right. and uh, and then they would get shipped out. And then uh, then I graduated. Would you get slippers or would you wear gloves? Um, I don't remember. No. I'd imagine we wore gloves. Yeah. Because you would get slippers. Gloves sound about right. Right. Yeah. And it was there was like a there was like a little escape hatch on the wall behind the sorting line, like the conveyor you belt. Escape through? Yeah, like if you had to go use the restroom or if you had to um, you like crawl in it. You know, you'd have to lean like way down and kinda scoop like this. <laughs> That's about how tall it was. Okay. And uh, so like one a day hobbit door? Yeah, like a hobbit door. <laughs> so one day and there were always like pallets of timber out there. Right. So one day they put a pallet out but there's a big old beam sticking out about four inches below the level of the door. Right. So what I did is I put my head down and I ran out and I full on rammed my head right oh. into this beam. Yeah, it cold cocked me. Like I just, I just out? fell back like this. Did you get knocked out? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. I don't remember that. Feel the top of my head. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. My skull is like that from hitting my head so much. Yeah. So for the rest of the day, I could taste color. You could taste color? Yeah, I would actually get tastes depending blood? on what I was looking at. I don't know what it was, <laughs> but I was out of it. So that's one wow. real story. So then they, gra answering your question, what did you do? Then they right. graduated me to actual, uh, like, eight-footers, like, right. just stacking two-by-fours all day long. Wow. Boy, you would be in shape. Yeah. You would be in shape. Yeah, I remember I used to get, um, I used to get haircuts from this girl that I really liked, but was way out of my league. And, um, yeah, I remember one day she was, like, feeling my biceps. And she was like, wow, this is really nice, Sean. And I was like, yeah. I was over the moon from that one comment. So I was like, yeah, I was ripped from uh, stacking two by four. And then, then one week they graduated 
me to, to actual beams, like 12 foot by, you know, 12 inches by 2 inches thick or whatever. And I could barely, it was comical. There were all these guys like, just brutes, absolute animals right. working in this section. They just go like, bam! And then there's you. Bam. Oh yeah, I just, <laughs> it was like, it was like Mickey Mouse. You know, I was like, oh, oh. And they like come over like, easy there, fella. You know? And uh, I actually think I was only there a day. So yeah, mill work, mill work was pretty brutal. That's crazy. So what but, did your uh, mom do? You know, I had, I had a great girlfriend. What did your mom and do? And I walked there? and rode my bike everywhere. She uh, cut board. Okay. And boy, you could lose fingers. Wow. And all day long, just she never inches did, from though, the right? way. Nope. Nope. Crazy. Never lost any fingers. And uh, yeah. So she actually worked just up the line for me. That's crazy. Cutting two by fours. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's Oregon. That's Oregon, and I learned a little bit of work ethic from that. I learned what it was like to at, put put in a full day and do it week after week. Right. And after that, I was like, respect. Yeah. That she was like. And there's people that, that do it like their whole lives. That's the craziest part. Because I look at construction workers, for example. Right. Like, what the heck? oh my gosh, they're out there like six o'clock in the morning, and they're I mean they're doing like heavy stuff, you know, and it's it's crazy. So I respect all you guys who do that. Like, I think my job's hard. Like, I do hair, you know, and I sit like this for hours, and it's, it's you know, my back hurts or something, you know, but then I'm like, oh, but that guy on the side of the road, that looks way harder than what I do. There's a lot of hard jobs, but lately, though, it's not like that. I mean, there's still jobs like those, you know, but a lot of jobs are computer jobs now. Like, we're taking all the jobs that used to be, like, really hard work into now it's computer. Right. I think but there are you still, still those need jobs. To build houses yeah, and there still are those, those jobs, things. but I don't think it's because I mean, twenty years ago, nobody had a computer job. Right. Yeah. Well, Everybody you had a did job. Hard labor job. You had a job. Okay, this is gonna date me, but I worked at a video shop when I was young. Right. Before computers. So you had to write everything down. You physically right. wrote down, with, and you had an alphabetized. Well, they they used to do that at grocery stores. Like you would come through and they would write everything down, like on a ticket yeah. for you. Oh my gosh, I couldn't even imagine like going to the grocery store. Like I, I get impatient like waiting for them to like scan my stuff, you know? And if I just sit there and wait, I'd be like, I'm not going grocery shopping. <laughs> I'm never going grocery shopping. It'd be horrible. It's horrible. I still remember the first time I logged onto the internet, though. Do you? Um, not specifically, but yeah. I remember computers. When I was in junior high, my uh, yearbook, yeah. I still have this, by the way, my yearbook says computers. Passing fad or wave of the future. Really? Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Well, I remember like in school. Nobody knew we what had, these things were. We had typing classes, you know, mm -hmm. and that was like the first step of it, you know. But like we never got on the internet at school yeah. or anything like that. Like this, Much older well, this is like junior high. I'm like 13, 14 Yeah, this is like junior high I'm talking about, you know. And then my high school, I wasn't really there, so I'm sure they had a lot of computers going on. <laughs> I was I'm sure high school <laughs> was great. Yeah, so it was a blur. But, um... So then I worked for this lady, like, right after I was, like, 18 or something. And she's like, oh, I need you to get on the computer and look at this up. And I was like, uh, what do I look up, you know? So this is, like, 13 years ago only, you know? It's a little behind everybody else. But so then I remember getting online, and it was, like, AOL, the dial-up, you know, and yeah. stuff. And I was like, what do I do? Where do I go to look it up? That was, like, my first experience. And then after that, you know, now I can't live without it. Who can live without the Internet now? Right? Yeah. Like, on your phone. Yeah. Oh my gosh, like it goes down, and you're like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? You know, it's just, it's tragic. Yeah. I don't even know how to use a phone book anymore. Like, right. the, the internet was down up at the cabin the last time, and I need to look up a number, and I was like, there's no phone book. What, how do I even look it up in a phone book? I'm sure I could figure it out, but it would right. take me a minute, you know? So, yeah, it's just very inconvenient when the internet goes out. Yeah. So. Absolutely. So I was watching this show last night with my kids. I don't know why. We just kind of were flipping through the channels. And uh, so Utah is on a fault line. You know? Like we're going to have some major catastrophe, <laughs> catastrophe of an earthquake one day. And so we're watching this and it's like this emergency preparedness, you know? So showing like the United States and like all like the natural disasters like are prevalent in certain areas, you know? So like for us it's like earthquakes. Flooding is like up north. And then uh, fires are up there too, but then it's like hurricanes and tornadoes, you know, around this end of the United States. And it's crazy. Like, it really scared me though, because like, I realized that I have planned zero for any natural disaster. 
Because really what happens in Utah, though? I think it's like every 500 years there's like some earthquake or something like that, right? Yeah. But not... Nothing really happens here. No. I mean, we have fires. You know, we do get fires, but it seems like they're like up in the mountains, you know, so they're not... They never come close to us down here. So, yeah, I'm going to get like a 72-hour kit because they... So they're talking about it. And basically, like, when America Red Cross come in or something, you know, like, when all these people come in to, like, save people after a natural disaster, they plan on three days getting everything organized and ready to come out and help people. So those three days, you're on your own, basically. And, like, I mean, there's only so many police and firemen and things like this that can come out and help you, but they're going to go to, like, one at a time, you know what I mean, and, like, help in certain situations. So really, the first... Three days, you're on your own. Do you guys have a 72 hour kit? Oh, yeah. Do you? Yeah, and our have, board, like, the we've last prepared person. and had training. We have block really? captains. Wow. Yeah. In fact, I was block captain for a while. I think that's genius. Where it's like, if you something happens. Captain? Okay, why is that funny? <laughs> oh, no. No, go ahead. I explain what a block captain is. No, go ahead. I want to hear why it's so hilarious. <laughs> I don't know, because I, I would imagine that, like, in really stressful situations, like, you kind of get really stressed out. If I'm wrong, say I'm wrong. You're wrong. Okay. Yeah. So you like, I actually do you like really well under pressure. Really? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. That's good. I've never seen you in like a really stressful, well, chaotic Well, you're seeing situation. you're seeing me in a. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Something will happen today that I'll just like scream like a little girl and curl up into fetal position. <laughs> That'll be awesome. Well, what do I do, Shannon? Help me. <laughs> I was a block captain, right. and they, they just gave you a thing saying, go check, here's the houses you have to check on, right. you know, and right. make sure, and they give you training, like, uh, in an earthquake, all the glass will be blown out. Right. So the first thing to do is not try and run out and see if your kids are okay, it's to find, to make sure your shoes are nearby, right. and that you get your shoes right. on, and you have a, you have a <coughs> flashlight under your mattress, you don't put it in the little drawer next to your bed, oh, okay. because that'll be knocked over. Who knows where that flashlight will be? Right. The lights will be blown out. There'll be no electricity. Right. Yeah. So you need that flashlight between the mattresses yeah. in order to get to it. Interesting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so we were watching this show, and it was saying things that I wouldn't even have thought about. Because, of course, you think of, like, flashlight, water, food, you know, that's easy to eat and stuff, and just to kind of eat, like, ponchos, and you know what I mean? Things like this, not the obvious stuff. But then they were saying, too, because, like, I wear contacts and glasses, and so do you. So think about, like, this natural disaster happens. Contacts aren't the way to go. Right. You need a pair of glasses, you right. know. But what if your glasses gets knocked over and stuff? Like, you need an extra pair in your 72-hour kit, which you probably would have to change out, like, every couple of years because, you know, your prescription gets right. old or whatever. So I thought that was interesting because I never would have thought of that. And right. my son wears glasses, too. Right. And so, yeah. Yeah, so and I, I haven't know. thought of that. I just yeah. learned something new. Thank you. Isn't that Maybe interesting? you should be a block captain. Oh, no, I should not. Well, then I think, too, like, how tragic would it be? Like, you never know when things are going to happen like this, you know? So what happens if you're, like, in Salt Lake or something and this happens? You know, your kids are with a babysitter or something, you know, and you're not even close to them. So this lady was talking, you know, and she's like, you need to plan on, like, if you're far away from your kids, maybe it's, like, a half-hour drive. But if something happens like that, you're going to be walking through rubble and trying to get to your family, so it's going to take make it three days, you know. So you need to have stuff set up at home so that your kids can actually take care of themselves and stuff. So yeah, it's happening. I'm going to build something to our kids, Good. and I'm going to train my kids because I asked my kids last night. I was like, so if we had an earthquake, where would you go? And my son just kind of looked at me. He's like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, what would you hide under so that you didn't get hurt? And he's like. I don't know. And I was like, oh, okay, let me tell you. And so we kind of went through it last night, you know, and I was like, this is where you would go. And we have, like, this huge, like, strong wood table, you know, which would be the best place for them to hide under. So, For yeah. falling debris. Right. Duck and cover, folks. Right. But it's interesting. You never really think about it, and I think... Because the communists could launch their nukes any day. I'm not scared of that, actually. I'm that was scared the 80s, of the oh, Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> In the 80s, we watch. I remember as... Teenagers, we watched Red Dawn, and we oh, yeah. were like, "Dude, that could totally happen." Have you seen the new one? No, I don't. I'm sick of people <laughs> telling me who I should hate and be afraid of. Oh, I no, won't do it anymore. I don't cooperate with that. It's a good movie, though. Yeah. We All right. Well, there you go. They remade it, so it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So, I guess we're talking about earthquake preparedness, right? Well, that's like so, something. No, that's, it's great. And it's not it's a good even. Topic. So they weren't even talking about like earthquake. 
place that they were talking about different areas, you know, and like what happened. So they talked about Louisiana, you know, when they had the floods, you know, and the what did what happened? The tsunami or what was it? They came over into like New Orleans. Oh right, yeah, yeah. It was a hurricane. Is that hurricane, hurricane Katrina? Yeah. Basically, the sea swelled, right. and New Orleans is below sea level. Right. If I understand right, well, they, they had, had like, old levees, so it just broke through and just broke and through. filled the whole thing. So with that's water. like another case too. You know, like people couldn't get out. They well, people were out. unprepared. In Utah, it's not going to be like that. Like you go into the basements around here, and it is like in our neighborhood. There's uh, or in our ward, there's 110 families. Right. And I would say at least 30 of them have a full-on year's supply of everything. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, it's just stock. That's uh, true. Oh, okay, this, this segues into the next segment. Okay. So, uh, as uh, everybody knows, I've been answering a question for the last year, which is, if I could have things any way I wanted, right. how would I have it? Right. No limitations. In, there's no limitations in my own brain. Right. In my brain, I have a spaceship. Yep, because I can have that. So... Yep. Sure. Got a picture of it on my wall. And it flies around. It's pretty like decked out. Cool. Yep. Cool. No, cool. it is not like that at all. Okay. But anyway, uh, okay, back down to earth. So uh, the, one of the question is, what kind of house would you like to live in? So my wife and I have been going out and looking at anything. In I want like a bunker in the bottom of my house. Okay. So a lot of these houses we've gone to have that. Really? They have full on like panic rooms. Bunkers, really like big cement pillars, like half the size of this main room. Are they in like Huge. the basement usually? Yes, they're underground, underground bunkers. Is that the best place for it? I don't know, but that's yeah. where they they're usually not on the second floor. Right. And they are stocked, absolutely. Like it looks, we saw one that was like a grocery store. It was so well stocked. Crazy. So I have a feeling Utahns are going to be okay in the case of a right. disaster. Yeah. There, because those people are going to go out and help other people. Yeah, they better, because I need help. <laughs> I'll be that person. <laughs> help me. No, I'm just kidding. I'm very self-sufficient. We can, we'll make You're it. really good at that. Yeah. Really good at Can I say some nice things about Shannon? Shannon I like this part. <laughs> Shannon is a woman of integrity. She carefully thinks through what she does, and she will, no matter what the situation, she will not go against what she believes is right. Oh, that's true. Thank and you. she has, she's industrious, and she is not afraid to roll up her sleeves and get to work. Absolutely not. And doesn't complain about everything. Sometimes, though. Well, you're sensitive, <laughs> but you do it. You do right. it in the appropriate context. Right. You don't just go, you know, spout complaints about everything. Everywhere. Right. So those are that's the nice true. things I have to say about you. Thanks. Yes, very high compliments. Can I say some nice stuff about you? Oh wow. Okay. I'm ready. So, first off, I have to say that I like all the colors that you're wearing. Okay. Because thank it you. does make you like more bright and cheery and stuff, and I like it. And you're the best boss I've ever had in my whole life. <gasps> Yay! Hands down, best boss awesome. I've ever had. And what else can I say that's nice about you? You make everything so fun. Like, this is the least boring job I've ever had. But, yeah, it's great. Wow, oh, that feels fun. super. Wow, that's this how people feel when I'm complimenting them? Yeah. That's awesome. Maybe. I love that know. feeling. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. So, anyways, there you go. Thank you. Ah, precious time. So it's Father's right. Day this Sunday. It is. is or is it? I didn't okay, register that I on my radar. I think it's this Sunday, isn't it? Last year, last year, every single person in my household forgot Father's Day. Aww. And my wife, <laughs> she's like, oh, it's Father's Day. So she had bought a half a dozen day-old donuts the day before. Oh, that's right. And that's she brought right. these donuts in. She's like, here you go. Here's some donuts. And it was like half off, day old on it. So I'll send her a text. Then, so I shared, I shared it with the kids. And then I'm like, so this is my Father's Day present. And she was like, oh, I feel so bad. And so I, I hung it on the wall. I wrote my Father's Day present. Yeah. No. It no, was, it, I, mean, I was just razzing her. Right. Razzing her? Uh, ribbing her. Okay, none of this no. sounds good. <laughs> it all sounds pretty bad, I'm sorry, what were you doing? Uh, um, you so anyway. a hard time. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So, um, so anyway. Um, so, but the fact is, I'm spoiled. All the other three hundred sixty four. I get whatever I want here at work. Tammy gives me not a single bit of hard time about anything. Well, I kind of hate the fact that like you and have to have spoiled. like a Mother's Day and a Father's Day. Like, why isn't every day just great for the mothers and fathers? And you know what I mean? Like, 
when I was young, I said, hey, what, when is Kids Day? Right. And my mom was like, every day is Kids Day. Yeah, that's true. It is true. God, kids. But I get, I, get, I get basically whatever I want, and Tammy is so nice yeah. all the time. Right. Yep. I say, I had a hard day. Come tend to me. And she cut, you're going to laugh. She comes there in and strokes my hair. <laughs> and she puts, she'll, ever, if I have a headache, she'll put like oil on my forehead. Have you ever watched Reese And she Cole? says, poor little bunny. Yes, I love that show. <laughs> that that show's yeah. hilarious. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I need to catch up on it. I've only watched the ones that are on Netflix. I don't think they have new ones on there yet, right? Uh oh, here we go. Yeah. Such a great show. You guys should watch it. Yep. Would you watch Game of Thrones already? We need to talk about this. I got, Did you I watch got it? this. I got them you home. I haven't it. watched it. I know, please. You gotta understand How are you not? Up. You've had them okay. like for three what? days now. How are they not done by now? Okay. Here's the answer to that. Okay. But let me preface it by saying, okay. what season are you on? I'm done. I, I just finished the season, the third. Third, so there's three seasons. There's three seasons. Okay. They so just to catch up and have something seasons. to discuss, okay. I'd have to watch a full three seasons. Oh, of this no, show. you've watched one episode, and we have so much to discuss. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so anyway. In fact, I'll even watch them again. I'll watch them again okay, as you're watching them. Then we can talk okay, about good. the same things. Yeah. I agree. Too. We're going to start tonight. Then like you're going to watch one episode tonight. Okay, I will. I oh, yeah. promise you I'll watch one episode. Okay, thank you, swear. This is so sad that I'm making you watch this brilliant show. Just wait till you watch it. Well, that's just it. I know it's. I hear all these great things about it, but I know. That if I start, I will. You know, derail. it is for me because I have the same kind of personality with you as like when I when I watch something, I watch it, you know, like really fast and stuff, you know. And I can't like stop. I have to oh, I have to find out what's gonna happen next. So I mean, I can watch six episodes in a day, easy, you know. Um, but with this show, it was so good. The end, like every episode, is so full of just so much stuff happens in every episode. You know, it's not like we're like. Builds up, it's all slow. But you can't watch it with your kids. Oh no. I can't have my no. eight year old and my four year old. No, movie. no. Okay. It's pretty yeah. racy. I mean, they swear, and that's not really what bothers me, but there's a lot of like nudity oh. and, you know, stuff like that. So, um, but there's so much that happens in every episode that I almost couldn't watch more than like one or two because I had to like let it process. You know what I mean? Like I had to think about it. Huh. And I even kind of wanted to watch those episodes again just because there's so much that happens in every episode. They, yeah you kind of can get lost a lot in it. Like, it's not a show where you can, like, do something while you're watching it. You know what I mean? Because there's, there's so many characters, and there's so many... There's seven different kingdoms, you know? So there's all of these characters in these seven kingdoms that they wow. go through, like, every episode. Okay. Like, I think it's the show that probably has the most characters in it right. out of every show ever. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. So, yeah. So I think you'll be okay. Like, I, right. I really went through and I watched, like, one or two episodes a day. Like... Yeah, it wasn't that bad. But now I've got, I want to go back and watch it because I feel like I missed out on some stuff, you know, that I can go through and catch up on. So, yeah. There you go. Wow. Let's, so <laughs> let's, let's get back to homes. Okay. So we've been like, okay, well, what do we want? And it's a harder question than you might think. Right. I, I've already decided. Right. I know exactly what I'm after. Right. The place that I want to live. Right. If I could have things any way I wanted. Parade of Homes is coming. So it's kind of weird. We were discussing topics, <laughs> this is and I was so like, funny. my wife and I are going to go see Parade of Homes, and well, she says... And I was driving down the street the other day, and they have like this big billboard for it, and I was like, I actually kind of want to go to Parade of Homes. Well, I'm thinking yeah. about buying a house, so it's been a right. lot on my mind lately, like, because I'm going to decorate this house, I'm going to like fully like remodel all of it, so I'm like, it'd be cool to go through Parade of Homes and kind of see what's out there, and I'm like, what? But I've never been before, so I imagine it's kind of like... I don't know what it's like. So, yeah. Well, these homes are through the roof. Right. They're and not. So, this is the other side. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, Tammy and I have been going to the other side to see what it's like. Right. And um, what I found is bigger is not better. Like, if somebody said, hey, do you want to live in this huge thing? Right. I, I would have to say no. Well, imagine, like, okay, so even just, like, the cabin that we do. Like, it's, like... So many bedrooms and stuff. If you had like your it family, it would take 15 there, minutes to just find your kids. To just find your night. kids yeah. every night, and everybody would be in like their own corner of the yeah. house. Like you would have no family interaction. I at like all. being able to say, you know, right. to whistle right. or I say my child's name hey, and they'll hear get me. Get up here, and they come up. Yeah, and you're close. Right. It's that's yeah. neat. So anyway, so so we're at the whiteboard here. And not five seconds later, my real estate gal called me and says, hey, I have two extra tickets for Parade of Homes. Yeah. And it was like, right and on the spot. I was like, spot. I want to go. 
So I did an exercise with my wife, because we've seen all these homes. Right. And this morning she comes out and she's like, Sean, I think I want to just stay here for two more years and fix it up and, you know, be with the kids okay. here for two more years. And I said, oh, really, you would? I said, okay. So I said, um, so in our mental exercises, right. I have uh, just, like, I just do spontaneous little role plays, not some giant thing. Right. It's not Inception. Right. So um, I say, all right, your Grandma Beulah is here, who's yeah. passed away. Right. So I say, Grandma Beulah comes. And the reason I use that is because in my wife's mind, that's someone who she can imagine doing something nice for her with no strings attached. Right. So she would accept that. Right. So anyway, I say, so your Grandma Beulah is here, mm -hmm. and she has two keys in her hand. Right. She has this house we're in right now, right. and then I named this other house we looked at. She has this, the house B. And I'm like, which one would you take? And so she goes up as if she's grabbing this. I'm like, yes, so it's not where we're at right now. That isn't what you want. It's what you're settling no, for. No, but Tammy's also a practical woman. And so but that's not, that wasn't the mental exercise. No, I realize that. But that's probably why it's probably why it's easier just to stay somewhere. And it's home. It becomes home. You've raised your kids in this home. And that's kind of what I'm dealing with right now. You know, I'm like, do I buy the house that I'm in or do I not, you know, and go find something else? But, you know, really it's home. You get used to the area you're in, the neighbors you have, the ward you're in even for you, you know, the schools that your kids go to. Not for you, that would be for me. But you know what I'm right. saying? Like, it just becomes home. And so, yeah, for Tammy, I can understand why she would want to stay somewhere. But that, for a couple that's more part years. of the exercise. Right. Okay. Right. But, but she didn't pick that key. Right. She did want the other. And of course, we're more mobile because of the school thing. Right. You know? Yeah, definitely. But so. It's interesting. It's, uh, there, there's a mindset. So I'm excited. I'm going to go to pray at homes. I think it'll yeah. be cool. Yeah. It'll be good for you. Well, folks, I think uh, we've run out of steam. This was like 40 minutes, by the way. Yeah, that was a long one, yeah. actually. That I was feel good. like I feel really like good. we needed to have like a lighthearted one after the last one we did. I need to go yeah. watch it. I didn't know that he had posted it because when we got done with the last morning show, we were both kind of like, yeah, that was weird and know. like way too personal. So we were kind of like iffy about it. So I didn't think he was going to post it. So now oh. I just found out that he did. So yeah, I, go watch I, it. I went back to look at it and right. I was like, yeah, this isn't that bad. Yeah. This is about. I just, about well, I don't. Right. Expose myself a lot, I guess, in that last one. So yeah, but that's right. what we do. Yeah, I guess but not anyway, that much. Like I said, you're right. safe. So <laughs> yeah. you let me know if anything yeah. is. Well, this is a lighthearted one. Just, so yeah, my daughter's doing fine, by the way. She's doing great. We still need to get her tested, but yeah, I think I think things are gonna be okay. Yeah, so life is good. I know things are gonna be okay. Yeah, I think she's good. Life is good. Yeah. All right. Hey, thanks for being a part, folks. Much appreciated. Now we have to go to actually do something.